What's up everybody? Hopefully you can hear me good. You should be able to hear me just fine. <clears throat> so again, just walk you guys through the basics as always. Uh, this image here of this uh, demon, demon devil guy is available uh, for free to download and use down below. I kind of already have it lined out for you guys. Um, so you can go ahead and take it, print it out trace it out whatever it is you're gonna do and you could try this exercise at home I've taken a little bit of a spray adhesive right so I have this Krylon stuff just because I needed to go get some and I went over to Walmart this is what they had for some reason they didn't have the 3m stuff available um, so I just grabbed this and it actually it worked pretty it works pretty good because it tacks up but it doesn't it doesn't grab as strong as the super 77 stuff um, so I've taken and sprayed some of that on just a regular print paper, you know, printed this out and laid it on top of our heavy cardstock um, paper that is made for watercolors. It's about 140 pounds a square inch. And that's what we're working with today. Today we're also going to be using Createx. I need to grab it over here. Createx uh, Red. So we're gonna need a transparent red. So we're gonna be using this wicked, wicked red. Um, and we're gonna be using it along with the 4011 reducer. And we're gonna be using black, but I think I'm gonna go with the illustration black. Illustration opaque black um, to go along with our design. We're gonna be using two airbrushes, so just again, like how we did last time, just to make it go forward and, and keeping it pushing on. Um, a lot of you guys have already moved on to having two airbrushes. So we're gonna be using one for red, one for black. And I'm gonna kind of run you guys through a quick demonstration of how to get a cool looking design um, on this devil. And then you, on your own time, can go ahead and detail it out and make it even better than it is if you wanted to add more colors and and do all that shebang that's all up to you how you want to use this image um, to your liking um, we're also going to probably need a good curve set so I'm probably going to be using you'll be seeing me use this curve set throughout uh, certain parts um, it always helps to have a good one um, in this case this is one of our stencil sets available here at mikesbrush.com um, 20 bucks they get sent shipped out right to your house and uh, you know they're long lasting like this one I've had it forever and you could just literally like if I just take my nail and just kind of run it here you can see that I could just peel the paint off look at that right if so I just soaked it in some soapy water for a while and then did that I could probably get it super clean and get it back looking uh, good as new um, but again if you're interested in one of these the website's mikesbrush.com. So yeah, <clears throat> what's up Ray Evans? How's it going? So as always, if you wanna be part of the live chat here, uh, joining the Skull Squad grants you access as well as we have different tiers that all help the channel bring you more videos like this going forward. Um, so if you're interested in that and you like these videos and you wanna see more of them, please consider joining the Skull Squad. 
Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, we've got this all cut out and I'm gonna go ahead and peel off all the background. So we're gonna start off by doing the background. Um, and hopefully I've got it all cut out just right. Got to cut this right here. see as part of the background and we might need it so just like putting it aside if you never know just in case if you want to go back and make some changes or something it always helps to have it just to be able to cover the background and not get any overspray um, in those areas if you don't want to This guy. This should come up. There we go. Sometimes I don't trust my own cuts, so I have to make sure I actually <laughs> I actually cut that. What's up, Stephen Ward? Hey, how's it going, Jesus? How y'all doing? Hopefully everybody's uh, week is going pretty good. So we had a, a nice visit yesterday from our good friends over at Spray Gunner. You can see our new sticker up here. Um, and they dropped us off some cool stuff to try out. Um, and they let us try out some other stuff too. But they actually gave us some stuff to try out on our own, which is really cool. Um, so you'll be seeing some of these tapes here, these custom creative tapes. They dropped some of these off. Um, we always use tape around here, so that's always nice and handy dandy. Um, they also uh, let us have, so they sell this kit, right? Um, <laughs> they have a brand name, their brand name is No Name Brand. Um, but they sell this kit and guess what look at the, look at what we have now in our possession it's one of those little mini compressors <laughs> so um, I actually got to try this out and uh, I don't want to spoil it or anything but first impressions were actually pretty good um, not not what I was thinking better than I thought and um, along to go with that uh, so they seem we do a lot of uh, flake and clearing and stuff. So they let us have one of their new, again, the no-name brand. <laughs> um, and I liked his reasoning behind the name. He actually told me why why they named it that. And <laughs> I can respect it uh, for sure. So they let us have that so we could try it out. Um, and I already have a project um, ready uh, where we're going to shoot some more flake and stuff through that. So get to try that out as well. Um, and and he said, "Yo, you, you don't have, you don't you know, don't feel like you have to be nice or nothing. Give us good honest feedback in your review or whatever." I probably won't be doing a review of the spray gun, but I'll be doing an unboxing and maybe um, just a good, you know showing how it works because we do have a project lined up for it but i'm probably not the most qualified to give uh advice on huge spray guns like that because i know what i like but i don't know if that translates very well to what everybody else uses and does um so yeah so again let, let's mix up our colors um oh yeah we're gonna be using two airbrushes today right so one 
that we've featured a lot in our channel and everybody knows and I love and it works amazing is the Iwata Eclipse um, HPCS this is like an amazing airbrush has a 0.35 millimeter needle all the good jazz but then spray gunner was here and they let me try out this uh, GSI or what is it is it GSI this Creos airbrush PS 289 it's a 0.3 millimeter and it even says Japan right on the, right on the airbrush um, and they let me try this out and uh, honestly I kind of instantly fell in love <laughs> with this airbrush it was like ooh, you know and uh, yeah when he tried to like remove it off my stand I was like you don't touch that airbrush <laughs> so he left it behind for me um, to try out and use uh, so you can expect a kind of a I can't really do a full review because we got a, a used one right this is kind of one he had just um, you know carrying around in, in a case uh, but he, it wasn't like in the original packaging brand new or anything like that it's been one that's kind of they've been taking around and letting people try but uh, you know I'll be able to give you my impressions on this airbrush so that'll be good here in the coming days and that'll be the airbrush we'll be using today for the black so let's start off by mixing up our red and I'm just gonna do about a uh, three three to one mixture of paint to reducer so there's already a little reducer in there so I'm just gonna take some of it out to put some paint in it's about three to one just so we get a really nice flow nice and even nice and nice and smooth and make sure to shake it really good right really shake it out Shake, shake, shake it up. And for the black, um, we'll do about four to one. So a little bit more opaque on the black. Just a little bit extra compared to reducer. It's opaque black and the red is transparent, so we don't have to work so hard at reducing the red, but the black for sure, we wanna make sure to make it stay black, but also flow smooth. And that's also why I went with the illustration one. You've got a couple of the GSI airbrushes and you love them, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened. <laughs> They were like, here, try this. And then I was just like, ooh, that's nice. And then, yeah, when he was like, all right, let, let's let's put it back in the box. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, he he kind of was like, all right, I guess we're leaving it. Um, so, yeah. And so there you can see we got a nice, nice dark black. Right. And then we got a nice, nice running red. Cool. So again, just starting with the background. Just zoom you guys out for a sec. So I'm just gonna kind of bring in the red from the sides here. Sorry, Stencil, you're gonna have to go down. There you go. And I do want it to come all the way up to his body, but I'm just gonna gonna lightly fade it in around his body, all the way around. And being that we are just working on print paper, we don't want to lay it in heavy. We're just kind of laying it in smooth, nice and easy, nice light, light strokes. Right, and this also helps you build a kind of a way of shading around 
and getting used to building in those fades. So just all the way around. And it's good too to like go all the way past. So you see this, I'm not just trying to fade this one area. Like just go ahead and hit it all the way across um, in order to give you a nice smoother transition. Right, then coming in from the outside, we're gonna kinda go a little bit heavier and bring it in. All the way around. And I was looking around, uh, right, so this image here, looking around Google. Um, I'm just looking at demon images to get an idea of what I liked or what it kind of, you know, kind of what kind of demon I wanted to see. And then I seen this one and it was just like, that is perfect. It was just like, oh, I don't even have to, you know, <laughs> I don't have to go out of my way to try to make something up. Like this is, it was exactly how I was kind of envisioning in my head. And he's like reaching back and he has that, you know, I like it. <laughs> Four drop reducer to one drop black. No, the other way around. Four drops paint to one drop reducer. Four to one, the other way. The other way. So again, we're just building in the red and bringing it in. Just, you know, lightly build it in. You don't have to be all crazy with it. It'll give you a nice little fade too. The, the lighter you make these strokes, more of a, of a kind of a blend you could get going across. And All right, so we're gonna kind of let it sit for a second, right? The don't oversaturate the paper, let it dry off. And then just give it one more pass. And you can see that red's really red now. And as we start working on the devil, <clears throat> you, you don't not, like you get worried, right? Because you're spraying out so far and you kind of see that pinkish tone. But as we start working in, we're going to start working closer, which will make the color come out <clears throat> a lot more concentrated um, at the, you know, because you'll be working in closer, so it's going to make the color come, you know, just look a lot more concentrated and dark. So don't worry too much if you think the color is not doing coverage. It's because we're working from far away and just lightly covering it in, right? So now we're going to switch off to our black. And we're just going to work our way around with the black. Kind of bring in a fade into our red here. Those are just nice light strokes. Remember we mixed up the black kind of heavy, right? So it's a little bit darker. Just gotta be a little more careful on how much and where you're bringing it in. Just a nice, even, light coat. I keep saying light, light coats. All the way around. Go back, darken all the edges, right? You see me that even though the edge is over here, I'm kind of giving the shadow like right where it would hit, right? Like all the way this way. Um, and that kind of just gives us our little bit of overspray, just kind of going to hit that edge there of the red. Um, you don't want to hit this edge because then you're going to have inconsistent um, shades in the background, right? You want to kind of let the red in that pink tone do its thing. It's going to look like it's glowing. Even if you want to take some yellow and maybe come in around, Maybe we'll just do that. Maybe I'll just add the yellow in in the background just to kind of make it look like a flaming. But, you know, that's just, you kind of want to let that color do its thing. It's going to be defined and you don't have to worry so much. Sometimes those, 
what would I call them? Indefinite definitions, right? So where where it's defined, but it's not like super sharp. Um, sometimes those make the greatest, uh, you know, like results, like where it just makes it look kind of the coolest or more realistic as to the way the way light plays and light works. Not everything is always outlined in real life, right? So sometimes some shadows and some things kind of almost blend together. Almost. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. So then we're just going to go around, make sure we darken it in all the way. We kind of want that black all the way in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and take another one of these airbrushes and just use some yellow real quick. Just to, just to basically top it off. <laughs> I'm going to take some transparent bright yellow um, and just a little bit of reducer fill that in real quick and I'll be using this uh, oh geez oh okay that just came off wow Hold on. give me one sec here to get these in place okay now I'll just be using this Sparmax Max 3 for the yellow real quick if anybody really cares about that so what's up easy how's it going stuck in there. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to take some transparent yellow real quick. Real quick like. <clears throat> I don't need much. Just a few drops. And a few drops of reducer. Shake it up, shake, shake, shake it up. And who knows, we might even use some of this uh, like in his eyes or something. Maybe even just give him a nice little glow when we're done, make him look like he's glowing. Who knows? What's up, Air Todd? Air Todd, you're the one that, <laughs> the reducer. I didn't even notice it was you, dude. I was just, <laughs> how's it going, everybody? Um, so again, I'm just going to take the yellow, going to hit the edge, might as well bring it into the red. It's going to give us a nice orangey tone for the background there. And we just kind of want him to be the focal point for our art piece here. So just work it around. That distinct yellow smell. I love the smell of yellow. I don't know why it smells different. I could smell it. Cool, lay that in just nice and easy. Nothing too crazy, right? Cool. So again, we're gonna start off with the very back and kind of move our way towards the front, right? So in the very back, we have this wing, and this is in the farthest reaches of this painting. So we're gonna start off by removing this bottom piece of the wing here. You can actually remove a couple pieces. So we're gonna remove that piece. We're gonna remove this piece here. Right, so this, this piece that kind of sits in there. And here I could actually move you guys back in. Oh, and I figured out how to use the manual focus on this now. So when I do this, 
I can actually look at that. Look at that. Oh, if it just it's too bright. Why is it so bright? Hold on. That's not normal. Just when I go right there, though, it's just like not, not there. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Oh, my man's, man's a camera master now. Look at that. Ooh. Cool. There you go camera master now uh, so we can take that piece right that's right off in there and uh, also pretty much the rest of this wing here All right, we're gonna leave the like spines or the bones that are from the wing but we're gonna remove the wing itself and we're just gonna start off with some red fade coming from this right hand side going down that way so here's where if you have that background and if you want to put that in to try to not get any overspray that's totally fine or if you have a shield like this you know it helps to just kind of put it in the way um, to not get any overspray right if you feel if you feel like living on the edge you know you could just kind of freehand it in but I'm just gonna kind of use the, the shield here on the very edge. Right where it's the darkest, right? Something like that. And then I'm just gonna carefully kind of bring in the shadow going all the way down again, all the way over here at the edge. And just bring it in. Nice colored tone. And I would say kind of leave leave a little bit of a brightness to the outside. But for now, just kind of focus on bringing a nice shadow from that right towards the left. A nice shade, a gradient of red, right? Just kind of bring it all the way down. Now, while you're working on this piece, um, it's a good idea to add texture, right? So if you want to add texture to your wings, um, it's totally okay to do so. So here I have the whole wing, right? I'm kind of working on that whole area. And say if I want to bring in like some veins, right? Just bring in some nice little squiggly marks. Going in. Going down towards the left there. Right? And you know, guys know what your veins look like, right? Just nice little squigglies going everywhere. Keep them kind of sporadic and Going all in the same direction kind of helps. All right, so just nice little squiggly lines, real nice and fine though. Keep them nice and in there, nice and sharp. All right. I want to darken in this whole kind of area back here again. This is the darkest point is this whole area here. Make sure we hit the bottom of the wing. So now I'm going to move on to the black. 
and we're gonna just take our black here and we're gonna kind of same same process right off to off to right here but we kind of you know since it's a little bit more fine you get a little bit more closer you don't pull back on that trigger as far you kind of do it all nice and closely right and we're gonna shadow in kind of that tail a little bit going around and then up and you see this this spine this bone here maybe we give it you know just a shadow on the bottom area bam same thing going up then if you want to maybe bring in some black veins right give it texture give it style some flair Get the bottom of the kind of over here by the elbow that make sure you shake that in shake that in make sure you shade that in guys kind of go around build it up darken it in and go all the way up with it right. bam bam now keeping on with that wing we're gonna remove the spines now I can grab it. There you go. There's that one. Then we can remove this one. We're gonna leave his uh, claw, like his. What is this? Uh, like his claw on the wing. It's like a secret weapon on the wing, man. Take the rest of that wing off in the back. There's also a piece right here. Right. And there's a piece like right up in there hiding right so we have all those pieces removed we're gonna go back to the red and this time we kind of want to get in there close and you kind of just want to red it all the way in kind of still kind of make a gradient from the right to the left right you're gonna leave a little bit of that white edge but just a tad bit you're not gonna like you know you're not going to really emphasize it much. Same thing up here. Maybe just go all the way on the right hand side. All the way down. Now when it comes to up here, we're going to switch sides. So we're going to kind of shade. Oh, keep that horn in place. And we're going to kind of shade down the middle of it. Down the middle of that spine. And then here, we're going to keep it down the bottom side so to match our shadow that we put in earlier and then just keep that shade going all the way up all right. and then coming in back in with the black gonna hit our shadow here at the bottom and we really want to darken in the edges. Make sure you hit the edges. And just bring it in. You don't really have to be too crazy with the black. Um, you know, you can kind of just reinforce the red. Just kind of a nice little shadow going up. That's all you need. If you're making this painting bigger, you know, you obviously want to add some details. Like maybe there's some, some ribs, you know, here. Maybe you want to add some shadows here around this nail. Maybe there's ribs going up, you know, like spines. You know, maybe stuff like that, you know. Use your imagination. Um, but again, we're making it kind of small. We could add little details, little highlights later. It's not really that big of an issue. But if you like and want to, you know, do that now, it's a good idea. So that as you're working across, you'll have all that detail in there. But for the demo, in order to not take 20 million years getting this done, we're going to move on. So pretty much have that wing done, right? And we're going to switch off to the wing on the other side. So right here, right underneath his armpit on the right-hand side, we get to remove the first piece. And then there is, this is kind of a trickier one because there's this piece right here. 
this piece right here. Put that back in. You see here, there's two different um, pieces here for the, the spine. <clears throat> the reason I did that was just to kind of give it an emphasis as it goes off to the side, but just to give it a nice uh, look, you know, that there's like, it's actually reinforced and, and working. So we're gonna come back in with the red. Kind of, kind of just give it all a nice shadow going down. And don't forget if you have, or you're worried about the edges, you know, it helps to put like this in place. And then we can shade in this, this edge over here, right? Bam, see how it goes. We kept that edge right here. Move you guys over here. So we're using that, we kept that edge right there, right? So same thing up here. We're just gonna up here. We can kind of basically fill these in with red. I'm not gonna lie, these would probably just be nice and red. <clears throat> and so we're gonna come back in with the black. Gonna start down here, maybe give them some nice the veins. Look, we forgot the veins in red, guys. But make sure we give them the black one. Come around, give them the shadow. Over here it's all completely red, so just doing the black ones is gonna be just fine. That's kind of what I was thinking. And you bring your life shadow all the way around, your veins. And that's kind of off to the side, so you don't have to be too crazy about it. But again, if you're making it big, you kind of want to make sure you detail all that in. And just go back and do the red veins over here. And kind of extend our red shadow here. Then we can remove this first piece here. All right, so remove that one. And we're gonna shade that in real quick. There's some red coming kind of right down the bottom side and leaving that top. And same thing on the other side. We're gonna come around the right side and we're gonna leave like this inner side kind of glowing just a little bit Bam. we're just gonna lightly hit this edge with black just a nice light edge if you want to add some detail you know, like there's little ribs in there go ahead and then we could take off the rest of the I don't know what to call these on the wing what are these called like when the, the bones of the wing all right, what is that? <laughs> so I'm just gonna take some red and I'm gonna kind of go on the bottom of these up here, right? So this is gonna go on the bottom, that one I'm gonna go on the bottom, and then these ones that are going up and down, I'm gonna hit on the right side. And the reason we're using transparent today is that you can see I'll go right over that edge, like right here. I'll lay that red right over that black edge like this and it won't cover up our black right you'll still have that black detail shine through and it'll still look good and we'll kind of just go around give it some shading fill it in bam then we're gonna come back in with the black a nice shadow going up now the black is opaque, so if you hit it too hard on these edges, it's going to really show, right? So just kind of lightly add in your details here. Maybe you want to add some nice little joint kind of figures here, right? Bam. Now we got our other wing done. Let's not forget our claws here for the wings. 
take that one off. Take that one off. I almost like the idea of leaving them white, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just take some black. And we're just gonna kinda lightly give me some some shadings kinda going off to the outside. On this side we have the horn right here, so it kinda works out perfect to highlight and give it emphasis. That's kind of it. I kind of want to make it look and keep it kind of whitish and brightish. Like make it look like it's sharp. I think it looks pretty good. <sighs> okay, so in, in line with keeping from the back to the front, right, we have to move over to this spear or trident that he's holding. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by removing this... Uh, the main pole section, the handle. Trying to leave his fingers in place. I'll only remove the handle piece. Good. For now, just remove the handle piece. Good. So one quick easy way to make this look round, and we even have yellow so we can make it look kind of goldish, but one quick easy way is to just go right down the middle right, of our pole here. We want to make it look round, and we're just going to go right down the middle and just give it a nice shadow down the middle, and hopefully our fingers would stay in place. So a nice shadow right down the middle. Move you guys over here so you can see. And that'll kind of give it a nice round effect. Now, if you're making it bigger, right? If you're doing this paint job bigger or this project bigger, um, doing it off to the left, like in a big size, and then coming back and doing the right side with just a nice soft edge. Um, really makes it look roundish and chromish. Get over here, finger. This one finger is like, nah, dude, I don't want to go. Not like this. Not like this. There you go. Get back in there. Oh, come on. I'd rather stick to my finger than stick to the paper. Anyway, we're going to hit all these with the black all these fingers on the bottom side Get those all marked in bam and since we have yellow already loaded I'm just gonna go ahead and take advantage and I'm gonna lay some yellow right over that handle cool then we're gonna move up we're going to take off the actual three trident pieces here. All right, so the main, the things that would make you go, ow. And same, same process, right? We're going to just take some black, kind of hit it. This, this one's not falling off, so maybe I can get it better. Hit our nice edges right here, nice and easy. Again, just go, since I have the yellow, I'm just gonna go ahead and make these parts kind of goldish. That finger, look, it's like, nah, dude, don't come near me with that thing. <laughs> so, gonna go ahead and remove these diamonds here. And we're gonna use the red 
those. Might as well, we have a variety of colors. Then we can remove our main holding piece here. And all I would say is probably just do a shadow on each side. All right, so one little quick shadow on the left, and one quick shadow, I mean one quick shadow on the right, one quick shadow on the left. And that makes it look like it's kind of, you know, together. And if you want to shade in the spikes here, Okay, Mr. Fingers, let's go ahead and work on these fingers here. We could get that one finger to just stay in place. This is gonna fight me every step of the way, this finger. All right. And fortunately, we have to start with the bottom finger here. Or, uh, no, we have to start with the palm. So we get to remove the thumb, the palm, and the arm. Right, all going this way. Now, just we're gonna use our shield here. We're gonna place it right over the pole, the handle, and we're just gonna hit the edge where the palm is. Not go on to the thumb. Just hit the edge of the palm with a little bit of black. Hold our shield in place, and we might as well just bring in a little bit of red. Boom. Right, and that's just to get the palm and the, the handle here. Right. Remember to move the camera, dummy. <laughs> What's up, Jim Modesto? How's it going? Um, so yeah, we, we got that shade it in so now we can start with the bottom finger remove that just take some red and try to hold these other ones in place just a little bit of red coming around and then just one little quick hit of black on the edge and then move on to the next finger. All right, same thing with the red. And we'll just bring it around. And again, if you want to shade this in and you want to add some details, maybe you're doing it bigger. You want to add some wrinkles and all that good jazz. Uh, now would be a good time to do it. Just a little bit of black. All right, finger, it's your turn. There you go, you get out of here. You live, you're free. And then the third finger, a little bit of red. And then just a little bit of black. Bam. Then the last finger, we could just kind of remove that out of the way real quick. Come this way. And we'll just take some red. Kind of shade it in there. Nice and easy. Now, I'm not going to do the fingernails, but if you want to get creative and, you know, add some nice claws to them. There you go. We have that shaded in. So, here on his arm, but here on the drawing we have his arm right and we have this uh, kind of his muscle here of his bicep all I want to do is find a nice curve that fits that bicep right there I'm gonna take some red and I'm gonna bring a red shadow going towards our wrists here I'm not gonna bring it all the way down I'm just gonna bring it like three quarters of the way down and I'm just gonna shade it in that way Take the black and hit the, just hit the very edge. We're not gonna bring this black shadow across. We're just gonna hit that edge and then we can remove it. Boom. Then we move back to the red and shade in our bicep. And then we're gonna 
bring a, a shadow line all the way around the bottom. As close as you can, but leave some of that red kind of showing through. If you want to add wrinkles here, um, you know, by all means, this is the time to kind of get his arm detailed in, right? Add some wrinkles maybe on his wrist, maybe he has some crazy muscle lines, whatever you like to see. Maybe he has some, just some crazy veins here coming out around his, his bicep. Because he's a demon, right? He ain't a person, so he's going to look crazy. Shade in his thumb, bring it around. I don't even think we need any more black. I think we could just get this all in with red. Now we've completed this left side. We have his arm with his trident. We have his wing all kind of done. We have the right hand wing done, but we have to continue on with his arm. See, his arm is still kind of behind all this other stuff. So let's move on to his shoulder here. So we're gonna start off by removing or lifting up here his arm piece. And all we're gonna do is take some red we're going to finish shading the bicep around. I think I went through, yeah, I went through all my red, so let's mix up some more red real quick. I'm going to have to hire a cameraman soon. <laughs> I'm hoping somebody hires me soon <laughs> to do this <laughs> full time for them. And I could just sit somewhere and make videos for you guys and get paid and not have to, you know, be like, please sir, will you sign up for my school squad, please? <laughs> and I could just be like, videos are totally free. You guys get them. Here's, you know, these products that we're doing. Uh. <laughs> yeah, a boy can dream, okay? So anyway, we got the red mixed up. We're gonna kind of go ahead and finish shading in his arm going up. We're gonna stop the shading there, right? We're not gonna go all the way because we just have it uncovered. We're not gonna just hit that whole edge. We're just right where that, right? I have a line marked where the line, marked line off is. We're just folding it up and we're just shading up to there. We're gonna take some black and just quickly hit the edge of that line. And we're gonna hit the edge right here and around, right? Bringing that whole thing into the back there. See that whole thing, that shadow um, will make everything look distant. So we're going to kind of fold that back down. We're going to do his neck real quick. Um, and the reason why is because we want this contrast um, down here on the pecs, but we want the darkness of the neck to kind of contrast on this line over here. So I'm pointing, but you guys can't see. So we want the contrast of the neck here to hit on. You see this little, little itty bitty line here? We want the contrast to hit right onto there. So we're going to take the red. We're going to add his jugular right on that side and bring it in an eye shadow. And then kind of like off of his jawline on this side. And we're going to bring in an eye shadow that way. Right, and so we're going to have his two jugulars, like one that side, one that side. So we're going to right, see those shadows there. Shade it in off of the off of his chin there and then around to the outside of his shoulder and towards his back get that nice and shaded in same thing with the black just kind of come in and reinforce your your muscle lines so we want that you see that contrast it hits right on that little piece and goes up Bring it around, mark off the other jugular, and then just bring a nice shadow right down to here. Leave that red kind of fading off into the back. Give you a nice, nice tone. So make sure you shade in his chin, or under his chin there. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this whole, what's left of his right side, right? So we're gonna remove that there. Come back in with some red. So we're going to have muscle kind of going off towards the shoulder there. 
and then we're gonna have a nice shadow coming in see that edge coming in towards this way so we're gonna it's gonna kind of give it that roundness you want to shade this side and a nice shadowy tone on that side um, we're gonna kind of use you see that little piece we're gonna leave that highlight but we're gonna use that to extend the neck onto the back over here right, so you'll see that that line if you faded it just in perfectly it'll kind of disappear but give you a nice blend off that way so again just hit the edge reinforce our shadow going in bam take the black and maybe you want to add some stretch with the black so if you want your muscles to look like they're stretching across just add some nice little quick strokes going off to the left there right shade off in the middle there bam see that some nice quick little strokes going off that way nothing crazy <clears throat> and so you see how this arm is kind of going towards the front so his head is behind the arm we're going to kind of leave that where it is, but we're going to finish off his body because his body is kind of in the same, on the same proportion as this other side here. So we can start off by removing his, uh, here, this, what is this called, the, under his armpit here. And we're also going to remove all these other little cuts that I had made and marked off um, as a good reference point for his ribs and his abs just to make it easy for you to have these uh, good notations of where your shadows are going to be. In case you're not very good with anatomy, it's just nice and easy. And even if you are, sometimes it's easy to just, you know, forget where you are in a painting. So having the markings just helps. So all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of black real quick, fill in the markings, right? We're going to mark those off straight with some black, not heavy. We're just going to lightly hit them with black. Remember again, you're working on the white. So even just the lightest hit, especially with black is going to really show on the other side. We're going to show, switch to our red and throw a little bit of red over that black there on those markings. And then we can remove that piece. Go ahead and remove that piece there. Bam. All right. So here we have the markings of his ribs and his abs. And we're just going to kind of use that and build in some shades. So you see, I'm just kind of putting the red over, right over that black. But again, we're using transparent red. So it's not going to completely cover that black, right? It's going to kind of give us a nice nice coverage but it's still going to be marked right, so we're going to shade around that tail bring it down kind of shade around that body now here towards the bottom um, see this is kind of like his belly button this last little mark right here like right underneath that's kind of where his belly ends and kind of going towards his pelvic area so we'll bring that up and then we'll bring it around just to kind of make off mark off his hip here now in this area we kind of want to just give him some texture again he's not a person he's a demon so give him some crazy veins and you know just maybe some crazy stuff that you know you wouldn't see on a person a person might have stretch marks something like that but they don't have you know crazy sideways veins going down their body Maybe we'll just make some going down his leg here. Reinforce the red. Make sure it's nice, nice and red. And here on this side, I'm bringing it all the way up close and onto where the tail is, right? So I'm just kind of hitting that all in there. Bring it all the way around. Maybe you want to pronounce your abs a little more. Pronounce the muscles a little more. Whatever it is you want to do, get creative and it's all right. Take the stencil as far as you can is kind of what I would say. Every time you, you work on it, just take it as far as you can. 
you know, obviously I'm here, I'm doing a demo, but I'm just trying to, you know, make it easy and comprehensible so even a beginner could get a nice result. So, again, now we're left with this piece here underneath his armpit. We're just going to go ahead and bring shading and around, right, so off of his peck there, just all red going down. Don't really have to do too much with the red here as it's kind of you know in the background there but we are going to come back in with the black here in this area and we're going to start by doing one quick stroke going down and then you see here kind of where his uh bicep and his uh shoulder here meet we're going to bring another line kind of connecting that line and then maybe bring some strokes going down Again, to give him some more muscle texture. Add a little shadow going around there. Right? And then we're going to kind of blend in our and hide our markings here. Maybe you can even add some extra ones here. But that's really what's going to kind of give this whole area more of a lived-in look. And all, again, it's already marked out for you, so you just kind of got to hit it right over that. And it'll give you a nice... Nice effect. Going to hit that edge of that tail. Maybe hit the edge of over here. And then again, if you want to get creative with it, you know, maybe you think he has some crazy hair coming in or some veins, whatever you want to decide to do. Maybe you want to add more detail onto his muscles. By all means. There you go. We got our our body kind of filled in there <clears throat> now again because his arm is in front of his head we got to move to the head first All right so here we can remove his ears my i like my demon to have ears I, that's why i kind of like this painting so it makes it look cool what's up bro how's it going that demon has your wings, oh yeah. So here we get his ears removed. All right. Ooh boy, that focus, look at that. I could get it nice and focused. Now if I could only get it centered is the thing. Cool. So I'm just going to hit the ears real quick with some red, mark them in, just kind of going off to the side. Again, if you're making it big, there's no reason why if you're making this bigger, especially if it's like a 16 by 20 or something big, you should be able to add more details into the ear, maybe some more veins, all that good jazz, should be no problem. <clears throat> Come back in with the black and just hit that edge real quick, nothing crazy, just the edge just edge it just edge it in there um, we're gonna remove the horns next so finally get to these horns now you can decide how you want your horns colored or what you, you know what color you like for your horns or what look what texture and these are all things to consider when you're working on this area is right because it's not just a horn horns have texture horns have color so you can decide what you want to see there and since we have yellow loaded i'm just going to use the yellow for now i'm going to go ahead and color it in yellow give him some golden horns why not Just to give us some, a little bit of flair, you know, a little bit of pizzazz. Hey, what's up, David Griffiths? A day off to watch my show. Well, t Thursdays is the perfect day to have off because that's when my show is live. <laughs> so good job, man. Congrats. Uh, and, and, and thank you for joining us live here. So I'm just bringing a shadow around. Kind of, you know. And again, if you want to give him some texture, I'm just going to give him some nice lines kind of going down. Bam. 
Bam. There we got that. So here on the face, I gotta kind of zoom you in on the face. Here, so here underneath his nose, there's this little piece right here. Go ahead and remove that. And then the very inside of the mouth. So this one's so small that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep the teeth on here. I'm gonna try. I can keep some of the teeth, it looks like. Right, but as always, I've, as I, I've always explained, if you're new, you should be doing it big, right? And then as you get better, you can kind of make it smaller. But all I'm going to do is hit those in with black, right? Bam, black. Then we're going to pull up the jaw here. leaving our teeth and we're gonna leave our nose and we're gonna pull it all the way up to there bam and then off of that nose on the nostril one side the other side just a nice little shadow going down and on the bottom of that nose and then kind of on this inside piece right there and while we have it like this, we're gonna take red. All right. And we're also gonna hit the red around, around the mouth. Bam, and I believe we can remove this. Leave the eyes behind to make sure you don't remove the eyes. Now again, if you want to mark off or put the horns back on, you can. I'm just going to take a little bit of stencil here and mark off that horn there on the back and this horn on this side. Kind of connect the shading there. Now again, it's not going to go over the black, but it'll go over the yellow, right? Because Red is a stronger color than yellow and they're both transparent. So right here in the middle, we're gonna make him look angry. So we're gonna connect both eyes with a line right in the middle, give him a nice brow going up and then shade the top of the eyes with red and a slight shadow on the bottom. Shade the cheeks going up. Bring that shading. And then here, if you want to kind of leave a little bit of space, and then bring a nice red all the way down. On the nose, again, you kind of already have it marked off. You just have to follow. And you can kind of give him his nice red on the nose there. Again, if you want to give him some details, maybe make it look like a little crazy texture on the face, whatever you feel like your demon needs to make him the ultimate demon, go ahead and do that. Right, so I'm just giving him a little, a little bit of texture, you know, he's not too much. He's kind of little, but he's still a powerful demon. <laughs> So again, again, we're going to go in with black. I'm just going to hit the top of the eyes there and bring the round of the brow around. And then we're going to connect the shadow here with the nose. And the outside, shade it up, around, the lip. There you go. Then we can remove our teeth, right? We have our nice demon teeth. We have our nice eyes. And he's looking crazy. He's looking crazy. Cool. So now we can move over to his peck. And we're 
the home stretch now so we can remove his peck. The very first one. Come back in with the red. And we're going to give him a nice shadow around. And again, because we're working transparent, it's not going to go over the red. But we're going to build the red all the way up to the edge and around. And then we're going to kind of shade it going up. And then on the top, we're going to again bring it in like his collarbone here. And then around his muscle here on his shoulder. Bring that shadow all the way around. And then maybe you want to build those stretches. Remember how we made his muscle kind of stretch? Bam, bringing those stretches around. Reinforce it with the black. Give him a nice, just leave a little bit of edge there of the red. Nice little shadow going around his armpit there. Maybe you get a couple stretch lines going across. I don't think my demon has nipples, right? So I'm not gonna do no nipples there. No, but you decide how you want your demon to look. Simple. Move on to the bicep. And we're gonna bring the red again all the way from the bottom. And we're gonna wrap it around to the top. And I kind of leave a little bit of that white there so that you can tell that the bicep is swollen. He's swole, son. He's swole. He got them, them guns. You know, he's ready. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, bring it into the black again. Nice little shadows around. Maybe some muscle texture, some muscle stretching around. Simple. Boom. And then we can remove on, remove his arm. Look at that. Wow, he looks cool. We could give him a robot arm. That would be sick. A robot demon. Oh, that sounds like a sick comic book. Anyway, we're gonna come in off the elbow here from the bottom. And you notice at the bottom, I'm going all the way up to the black. I'm not worried so much about the black edge because I know the red's not going to cover it. We're working with the transparent red. I'm going to keep emphasizing that. But all we're going to be doing is bringing in his kind of like his muscle figure. All right, so nice little shadow lines coming up. Wrapping them around. And so here on the top of the fingers, we're going to bring in a red and we're going to shade it down and then we're also going to use that to mark off the knuckle right so off of the top of the finger we're going to shade it in shade it all the way up to here right where it bends and then we're going to bring a little bit of a, a shadow going down moving crazy do it on the next one a little bit right there right where it comes down Last but not least, the last finger. Shade it in all the way and around. Bring the shadow, maybe you want to bring the shadow all around the finger. Gives that finger that nice roundness. And then again, if you want to give him some veins, some texture on his arm, because he's a crazy demon, you know. He doesn't just have regular arms, he has crazy demon arms. Get all that nice little texture in there. Again, just gonna come in with the black, kind of reinforce our shading off the bottom, reinforce our muscles, and then maybe just a little bit right here, just where the fingers kind of in between, and maybe marking off the knuckles there. Bam! Nothing too crazy. I think that's it. I think that looks pretty darn good. Uh, let's see why not? Let's give him some yellow eyes. 
some really Oh no wait, we forgot his tail. We still have to do his tail. <laughs> so we're gonna start down here where his tail connects to his body. Take our curve set, find a curve that matches here where his spine meets his butt. Come in with the red. And we're just gonna do a nice shadow coming off to the side here. Do a nice red. And then hit the edge with black. Bam. Should have found a better edge that matched up a little better. There you go. And then we're going to come back with the red. Give him some nice shadow along the bottom side here. Deep shadow on the bottom side. Light shadow line across the top. So again, the bottom side. We're going to reinforce it and extend it, make it a deep, nice shade going up. And we're gonna, on the other side, we're going to do a nice little thin tapered, shaded off line. Take it all the way up. See that? So then we're going to give it a nice little, give him some texture, right? So we're just going to do some kind of some rings, some nice little strokes. Nothing too crazy, just kind of give it around. And then reinforce it with the black. So I'm probably only going to use black on the bottom edge. And just do a nice little thin, thin black stroke right along the edge. Bam. Then we could take off his little, his little poof tail, his little spike. Bam. Take the red and we're going to just come right off the middle there. And off to the sides. There you go, guys. You have your nice demon. All finished up, looking good. Looking good. And if you want to add some details, again, by all means, it's all up to your imagination and how much time you want to dedicate to your painting. Of course, I could go all day here just adding details. I could come back in with white, add some white highlights. You know, maybe come back in with some pink, add some mid-tones. You know, do all that shabazz, and you have a really nice painting here. I'm just kind of giving it a quick little once over just to give you guys a good, nice shot. Just making sure I hit everything and get everything looking nice and red. There you go and there you go guys pretty pretty nice let's get you guys over here uh, straight on look yeah. 
And there you go. Look at him. Look at him. He's looking at you. Look at him, I said. Oh yeah, being able to control that focus is a lot better. Look at that. So as always, guys, I thank you guys for all the support. Thank you for watching. Again, if you like these videos and want to see more like this, buying the stencils available at mikesbrush.com helps. Also, joining the Skull Squad helps. Watching all the videos, dropping a comment, hitting that like button, all that good jazz. Make sure you stay subscribed for more. Um, as always, I want to shout out to Createx for providing the paint for today's video. Um, great quality paint for great quality art, pretty much. <laughs> I, I wouldn't recommend any other paint at this point. Um, yeah, shout outs to Spray Gunner there for dropping by and uh, providing us with some cool products for us to try here as part of the Skull Squad. I say we because it's me and you guys all together, man. We're in this together. Um, but yeah, shout outs to them for dropping by, bringing in some cool products. Um, and it looks like we'll be working with them in the future. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? Uh, thank you guys to all who are part of the Skull Squad, as always. Thank you guys for being members and providing support for the channel. It has really helped these past couple months. You wouldn't understand how much the YouTube revenue actually helped. Um, so yeah, thank you guys a lot for that. What about the teeth? Oh uh, yeah, you, you could shade in the teeth if you like. I kind of like the way they look all bright like that. Like with his eyes too. His eyes are you can shade in his eyes if you feel like it. But I like him really bright. Um, so yeah. What's up Dennis? How's it going? Uh, you can't see the fingers? Which fingers? Did I do it wrong? No. You, should, you can see the fingers. I don't know. He needs yellow teeth. Oh man. You really want to give him, you want to give him the grill? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. You could obviously do this at home and do it any way you like. If you want to give him gold teeth, that's up to you. Um, so yeah, I think I like him with the white teeth. I'm going to keep him that way. But as always, you know, again, thank you guys for all the support. We got some cool videos coming up. I'll try to remember to hit upload on the, on the top coat video for the Camaro. And then I got to shoot the last video um, for that. And yeah, then the stencil videos will come in. We got lots of videos in the works, in the pipeline, and they're all coming quicker, quicker than I like. But they're all coming, coming. So again, thank you guys for all the support. And good luck. Happy painting to all of you. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.